As we celebrate the first year of Overwatch, teams from around the world are assembling for the 2017 Overwatch World Cup. It's a continuing story in Overwatch Esports, but every story has a beginning. Whoa. On August 4th, 2016, Blizzard announced a three-phase tournament, qualifiers, a group stage round robin, and an eight-team two-day final event at BlizzCon 2016. Hopes were high, but competitive play at this level was untested. The rosters for competing teams were democratically chosen by a massive pool of early access Overwatch players. 60 countries from three regions, Americas, Europe, and Asia Pacific, competed in the first phase, the qualifiers. The qualifiers were grueling, with diverse competitors coming from around the globe. But right from the start, South Korea stood out, with a strong community of players who chose their best to take on the challenge of BlizzCon, electing the enigmatic Dong Miro Jin Hyuk as team captain. Miro wisely chose Kim Tyrone Taeyong, a seasoned and revered captain, to lead the national team to the World Cup. The team members already knew each other's strengths and weaknesses from playing together in the burgeoning Overwatch community. All right, well, of course, best of luck in your matchup. This is going to be a barn burner, folks. After an exhaustive tournament of over 300 matches, the 16 qualifying countries all moved on to phase two, the group stages. The group stages were set for an all-out round-robin tournament with teams flying in from all around the world to Anaheim, California, where they would compete for a chance at the finals. One of the unexpected rising stars from group stage was Thailand, and they were thrilled to be there. They're all just sat there with big grins on their face, even when they're losing, they're so happy to be here. No team has been as loud as Thailand was. In their first match, Thailand squared off against China, using a combination of Symmetra and Mei to great effect, and they only seemed to be getting better. China won, but Thailand did not make it easy for them. They went on to win matches against France and Singapore. They're up to 95%. This could be it, and Thailand will take it. Setting the stage for a tiebreaker round for Group D. The stakes were high for Thailand and France. Only one of them would be going on to the playoffs. Right to the mouth. It's going to be France taking our tiebreaker here over Thailand. Ending Thailand's bid at Overwatch Bragging Rights and securing China and France's place in the finals. I have one thing left to say. Viva la France! Yeah! <laughs> Meanwhile, rivals Sweden and Finland rolls confidently through the group stage, both with all-star teams. Kevin Tavik Lindstrom, playing for Sweden, has a reputation as perhaps the best Overwatch player in the world. And Andre IDDQD Dahlstrom has proven himself a strong team captain for the Swedes. They lost to Spain, but won matches against Canada and Brazil that sent them through to the finals. I love Sweden as a country, and like we want to take the victory home. I want to beat everyone, but especially to Sweden. Finland, meanwhile, was relying heavily on their expert individual gameplay. Timo Taimu Ketsinen had a reputation as an aggressive player with Widowmaker and McCree, and Yanni Saini Kakinen was known for his DPS play. Their all-star team charged forward to the finals, losing only once to South Korea. Meanwhile, the biggest threat Russia brought to the World Cup was without a doubt the indomitable George Shadowburn Gushcha, perhaps the world's best Genji player. Uh, I don't know what to say about this first map. It was 39 to 1. <laughs> In practice, everyone else on the team tended to play support, flawlessly rising to the occasion to systematically dominate their entire group. Meanwhile, the U.S. came in second in the same group, taking wins against Germany and Chile. Gonna be a double kill for Seagull. Just no answer from Chile as he picks up the third. South Korea progressed through the group stages, besting every one of their competitors, subsequently breezing into the playoffs. With an ever-evolving and powerful approach under Tyrong's steady leadership and Miro's singular mastery of Winston dominating the board. Getting those kills already, things are looking pretty good for He's just... He's just killing people, and there's nothing to be done about it. <laughs> After a harrowing competition, eight teams won the group stage, but there was no rest for the victors. Next time they met, there would be only one winner. <laughs>